Hello everyone and welcome back to the Dice Brigade uh, unboxing video. Uh, today we're doing the G.I. Joe Mission Critical, the Cobra Ascent expansion. Uh, this, um, the Serpent Rises, gather your team and prepare for battle. Cobra is on the move. And this time, they're led by the sinister Serpentor. You also face the unrelenting 1-2 punch of the twins. Zamnot and Tomax, as they try to pound you into submission. But hope is not lost. You will be joined by the explosive firepowers of Bazooka and Rock and Roll, as well as all new vehicles to add to your arsenal. This just arrived, and I am looking forward to unboxing it. I also did the little pre-order, so for free you get the uh, vehicle pack number four, which I have one through three already. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this. I'm looking forward to this. It's uh, these are cool villains and cool Joes. see so you got the little ads hey you know if you like gi joe you'll like transformers and power rangers by the way heroes of the grid great game here's the little um what's included i'm going to take a look at that in a second okay Character cards. What are your guys' solutions for storing these kind of games? Because there's a lot of expansions, and um, yeah, I don't want to take up all my shelf space by getting this and the Power Rangers games. If you guys have any um, storage suggestions, I'd love to hear them. I have an idea of what I want to do, but I'd like to see what you guys are doing. So, um, I'm gonna look at the miniatures here in a second. I think my favorite miniature from this game so far is Ripcord. He has a little parachute on him. And I haven't played as him yet, but he looks like a lot of fun. Looks like there's supposed to be some sort of like easy way to grab this, but there it is. Let's see, my fingernail isn't catching it. So I'll look at the Joe cards when I have a second to look at their uh, their main cards. I'll look at them. Um, actually, I wanted to look at the rules too to determine. Here's the Nemesis cards of Xehanort and Tomax. If you haven't noticed, their names are the same but backwards. So I will read that in a second, and here's the Serpentor card. I've seen some of these previews or spoilers on Facebook, but uh, obviously it's pretty cool to get the thing. Okay, here's what the uh, little pamphlet says. So two character cards. We will get into the characters in a second. Two vehicle cards. This expansion has new enemies, uh, follow the rules on the back of the book, okay. Uh, Tomax and Zamor, this is what I'm actually interested in, um, are powerful with unique co combat mechanics. Tomax and Zamot are treated as lieutenants for all gameplay purposes, except that they are able to share the same location, and while they are in the same location, they count as one figure uh, for the purpose, the figure, for the purposes of figure limits, okay. Very cool. I'm going to read their card in a second here. While Tomax and Zamat are deployed, keep their deployed cards nearby for reference. 
At the start of the battle, if both Tomax and Zaymort are in the same location, place Tomax's card in the bat in the combat sequence as normal for a lieutenant, then place Zamont's card in the combat sequence in the same row. During each enemy turn after resolving Tomax card, resolve Zaymort's card beneath it. When a hero performs an attack, they may choose to target either Tomax card or the Zamont. <laughs> Zaymont. When let's see. They may choose to target either Tomax card or the Zaymont card. When the Tomax or Zaymont card suffers uh Wounds equal to his health value. It is defeated and flipped face down. Axis damage may be placed on the other enemy card. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, Tomax and Zamat cards are in the same uh, same section of the combat sequence and are considered adjacent for to each other for the purposes of the guard keyword and other game effects. When the heroes have defeated four cards from either Tomax or Zamat's card uh, deck. That enemy is defeated, remove their figure from the location, and return it to the supply. The, the supply. That enemy's card no longer... That enemy's cards are no longer placed in the combat sequence during future battles in this game. Once the heroes have defeated four cards from both Tomax and Samot, um respective decks, the twins have been defeated, removed all their figures and their remaining foot soldier figures from the current location, and return them to the supply. Foot soldiers are not considered defeated. The hero gains normal rewards for defeating lieutenants. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, I'm going to have to look that up. Um, so it looks like once you defeat both of them, that ends the battle, which normally you'd have to go through and finish the battle. So that's an interesting rule. Okay, so it's Tomax and Zamat. Act together during battle. Place one card from each of their decks into each slot of the combat sequence during the enemy's turn. After Tomax card resolves, you immediately resolve the Zimat card in the same slot. Okay. So. So. The so the way these guys would work is when they're deployed, you know, they're fighting Cobra here, or they're fighting G.I. Joe here, they're them and the uh, troops that they'd definitely be deployed with. Um, so normally, you would lay out the enemy cards, you know, left or right, like, you, like you've played this game. If you've, if you've played this game before, you know what I'm talking about. Well, these guys have their own decks. So if I... Okay, and this is cool too because the sash will actually tell you which the way their sashes are facing. So, this one's Tomax. The one that's kneeling is Tomax, and the one that's standing is Zamont. So you do Tomax's first. So you'd go one, two, um, three, and obviously take uh, note of any fast keywords. But then you would place it like this. So make sure your keywords are uh, exposed. So if I understand the rules correctly, you're supposed to place Tamax first and then Zanat. And then the other thing too is uh, the guards, uh, they're considered adjacent to each other for guard purposes. So for example, this card is not only guarding these cards, it's also guarding this one, if I understand the rules correctly. Um, the thing is, these things also have pretty low health. Um, so if I were to come in here and, okay, so you when you guard something, you can't target a card that is guarded. But the rules say that you can carry the damage over to the other card. So let's just say that I wanted to take out this card. Um, and as you can see, it only has one health. So if I roll high enough to damage it, uh, let's just say I rolled a four, which would be pretty cool. Um, so what would happen is the damage would take out this card because it's guarded. That's why I would take this card out first. So you'd flip this over 
and then I could take that extra free damage and roll it up to this card and take out that one as well. This would be the hardest one to get rid of though. Oof. Anyway, so this is going to be a lot of fun. These combinations will be really, really cool. Uh, so then this card would activate and you would read it and then you would go and activate this card and do those effects as well. Um, and hypothetically, let's just say that I was able to defeat these cards here. That would take Zamont out of that takes Zamont out of the game. You know, he's the one with the scar, but he's also, huh? Sorry, that's a bit of a critique, and I'll, I'll get to the miniatures in a second. But so if I took him into battle. And then um, we had this card defeated. Then the next time, um, Tomax, when you when you wanted when you would go to fight Tomax, again, just so in that scenario, we hypothetically were able to defeat four of uh, Zamont's cards. So then he is out of the battle. And then Tomax, you would uh, when you re re. Uh, engaged with him, you would shuffle. And then again, hypothetically, I've defeated one of his cards. You would still draw the four cards. And then you, in my scenario, you'd have to defeat three of his cards. And um, now, normally when you're fighting a lieutenant or a, or a monster, um, once you defeat enough cards to win, you just have to survive the battle. And then uh, the match, they're, they're defeated. It sounds like... <sighs> So again, I, I would like to know if Renegade said anything, because it sounds like once you defeat them, once you've defeated enough cards, that immediately ends the battle. Okay, let's talk about the uh, boss of this game. Serpentor. Serpentor was supposed to kill Duke in um, the G.I. Joe movie. But uh, because of the negative reception to Optimus Prime's death, they put him in a coma, which is hilarious because if you watch the ending, you can tell they were too far in production to change it. So it's like they're all like crying, like, oh, if only Duke had been here. And then they're like, well, he, he woke up from the coma. Yay. <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's just hilarious. Um, but yeah, and you can tell it too, by the way, it's animated and stuff. Duke was supposed to die. Um, but anyway, uh, so when you fight the boss, you have to do two battles with him because you, could, you have to defeat six of his cards, six of the boss's cards. And... Um, you can only uh, you you can only do four at a time, so you have to essentially survive two battles with the boss, which I love that mechanic. So let's just say we fight Serpentor now again, our two brave Joes, which you'd have more than two, um, but I, I just have these two out for now. So you'd fight, uh, let's just say, um, Perfect Assault. Uh, oh no, fast cards. Does he have any? Nope, he doesn't have any fast cards. It's uh, There's not a lot of fast going on on here. So if you had a fast card, you fight the cards from left to right here. And if you had a fast card, when you deployed it, you would put it in front and move all the other cards to the left. So usually fast cards are nasty. And um, But anyway, so with these guard words, it means that they guard any cards that are adjacent to them that are not cards. And uh, pass. Oof, okay, so like this passive, for example, this doesn't do anything, so when it activates, nothing happens. The thing is, it's passive, so it's always happening. So while this card is in play, each other Serpentor, so other, look at keywords, other meaning not this one, uh, each other Serpentor, Serpentor cards has plus one health. Each time Serpentor cards deal damage, increase that damage by one. So we'll go over here. This now has six health. Uh, and it's also guarded, by the way. This one's double guarded, so you couldn't just kill this one right away. Unless you had something that could ignore guard. Still six damage. So this card would be six damage instead of six health instead of the five. And it says drain free energy, deal free damage to each hero. This damage cannot be prevented in any way. But we have this card here. So that's also deal four damage to each hero. This damage can be because there's there's cards you can play to reduce or prevent damage altogether. This one Keeps you from doing that. So Serpentor is pretty nasty. Um, again, I'm going to go through all of his cards, but I'm just kind of showing you what a typical battle, like a, 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 what my battle would be against him. So yeah, four damage is not going to kill a Joe, but it will hurt. Um, so uh, then 
This one's also deal four damage to each hero. This card cannot be defeated until it has resolved. So this one, normally, it's only got three health, which is, well, it would have four health, but uh, normally one of these big strategies in this game is to try your best to prevent cards from activating. So if you were able to lay down, let's see, this one says remove half the foot soldiers from this location, round it up, deal six damage to, a he uh, to an equal number of heroes. So if you have five Joes in this battle and you have five foot soldiers, you're going to deal six damage. And if this card's still alive, that's going to be seven damage. It's a, whew, this card would uh, would be... And see, this is where this Apex Strike is really annoying, now that I'm looking at this, because you can't kill this card, but it's guarding. And this is one card you'd want to remove, because that's dealing the most damage. Oof. Well done, guys. Well done. This would, this would be a very nasty fight right here. So the strategy is to get ahead of the curve and defeat cards before they can activate. Obviously, this Apex Strikes makes it hard. Now, let's just say that you're able to defeat three of the cards... Then you would keep these to the side. You take the other one card, return it back to the deck. You would shuffle. And then you would fight them again. Which again, you would... Uh, okay. Again, in this scenario, I've defeated three out of his card, uh, three out of three cards. So I'd have to defeat another three to, and survive to win the game. Um, this is Bondless Ambitions. Deal five damage, repeats its effect, an additional time for each Serpentor card that has been defeated or discarded. Okay. So deal five damage. Oof. And you repeat that effect. So, um, so if this came up now, I wonder if that would count the cards that you defeated in the previous match. That would be an interesting scenario. Um, he's a hard boss, so I want to say yes, it says for each card that has been defeated or discarded. So that's a card you'd really want to take out. It's only got four health. So if this were me, I'd probably be attacking... Ugh, man, you, you just never know. Like, you'd have to look at the scenario. That's one thing that's fun is you can have good strategies going into a fight, but it really just depends on how the cards lay. Okay, we've looked at the bad guys. Let's take a look at the G.I. Joes. We'll do the vehicles, um, and I'll open the vehicle core, vehicle pack four here in a second. But we got Rock and Roll. Rock and Roll is a machine gunner. He's got this big old belt-fed machine gun. And, uh, although in this one, it's a mag. Huh, okay. No big deal. He's, it's funny, he's got like a, a belt on his, uh, you know, in his costume there, uh, bullet belt, but he's using a gun with a mag. That, that'd be heavy. Um, anyways, it says, once for a battle, when an ability would allow a hero to reroll any number of dice, you may instead add two dice to that attack, to their attack. So, I want to hear from you guys, what you guys think about that ability. For me, I almost, most of the time, I when I choose to use rerolls, I'm rerolling more than two dice. So, I think that it would just be worth it just to reroll. Maybe if you had a reroll and you only had one die, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get some more dice going. Or, I'm trying to think of scenarios like if you don't need a reroll, but you need an additional couple of hits, then I guess you could add two dice to that. Because if you have guaranteed hits, so this 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 ability isn't isn't useless, but I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites either. We'll take a look at his cards here in a second. Um, but then you got Bazooka, uh, Missile Specialist. Once per battle, after any hero defeats an enemy card with an, an attack, with an attack, that's an important keyword there, deal one damage to an enemy card of your choice adjacent to the target. This is great. This avoids block, and I think some of these cards are one hit. Yeah, one health. Um, so... That could be a way of just defeating another twin card, because, uh, again, cards that are stacked are also considered adjacent in this game. So, um, yeah, so both of these guys have one-hit cards. Um, also, that that's just a handy thing. Splash damage is always handy. Um, so, very, very cool. I'll get to the vehicles in a second. Let's look at Rock and Roll's cards. Um, Rock and Roll's a cool name. I don't 
know how often he was using the cartoon. I've seen most of the first season and part of the second season recently, um, watching them with my son. Um, I know Bazooka gets some decent amount of screen time, but I don't think rock and roll gets a whole lot. Um, so if you're new to the game, these cards have an energy cost. So there's attacks, reactions, and maneuvers. Reactions are, uh, will tell you when you can play them, and maneuvers you play them instead of an attack. Okay, so see, this is like uh, one of one of Bazooka's abilities, and I, I think the, the deck was made to pair off this because it says you may reroll any number during this attack. Um, it's two dice. It's a zero cost two dice card, which is pretty good. It's two shields. Uh, whenever someone deals damage, you would draw a card from your deck uh, and subtract the shields from the amount of damage. If you're less than, if your shields are less than the damage, you would draw and you would add those shields to that. So if you had two shields and you drew another two shields, it'd be worth four shields. Um, so if it's less than, you draw a new card. If it's equal to, you're good. If your card, if you have more shields on your card than damage, that shield, that card then goes to the bottom of your deck. Um, so it's, it's a really fun game because uh, you only have like 10 cards. So anyways, um, it says you may reroll any number of dice during this attack. So this would go well with Bazooka's special ability, because uh, then you could do a four die attack if you wanted to, which I could see being handy. Um, there's Focus Fire, it's a one energy cost, it says uh, the next time any hero performs an attack, they may reroll any number of their dice. Okay, so again, it looks like Bazooka has a lot of rerolls, which are, I think it's supposed to complement his, uh, his uh, it's meant to complement him, his character, so... Uh, this is a rapid reload. Uh, play this card after any hero resolves an attack uh, with an energy cost of zero. Gain one energy and return that card to their hand. That would be handy with some cards. I'll tell you that. That's cool. Lay on the trigger. <laughs> okay. So, um, this is a zero cost one die attack. And it says add one die to this attack for each differently named attack card in the discard pile. So, so far, he has three, if you count lay on the trigger, three attacks, so four attacks. So you could get a possibility of five dice out of a zero cost. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, okay, so lay on the trigger, I like that one, because this is definitely named attacks, so reactions don't count. Okay, uh, riding shotgun, uh, Play this card after a hero uses a vehicle card. The next time a hero performs an attack, they may divide the damage from the attack among any number of targets. That's really good. Um, so essentially, whenever a hero uses a vehicle, you play this card. And then you would want to pair this with like a really big attack. So you'd use a vehicle, you'd play this card. You'd use your big attack to use your splash damage. When you roll the dice, there's three hits, one crit, uh, which is two two hits and two blanks. So you have a four and six chance of rolling damage. So I can see this is a uh, this is a six die attack, and sometimes you're going to roll six attacks or more because you might get a couple crits in that too. So then, since this is a re-roll, you can just add two dice to that. I can s actually see how that would be. Now that I'm looking at his cards, I can see why that would be handy. So who knows? I mean, rock and roll. I think if you play him right, you could do a ton of damage with him. So, cool. Those are rock and roll cards. Uh, oops, that's Bazooka. <laughs> Bazooka's thing is uh, when you defeat an enemy card, you can deal one attack to an adjacent enemy card of your choice. So he's got Arcing Shot. You may ignore the guard keyword while choosing a target for this attack. Add one dice to this attack for each enemy adjacent to this target with the guard keyword. So this would be great um, with that Serpentor scenario that I had earlier where there were uh, there was two guard keywords on the other side of them. And then, hypothetically, uh, if there's minions or there's troops, there might be a guard, guard keyword below him. So it's a two dice attack, which you could up to five, potentially. And maybe even six if you do it against uh, Xehanort and Tomax, because they also have, they're also considered adjacent. So, hey, not bad. That would be fun because if you're rolling six dice, that's going to take out that stack of cards. <laughs> um, so very, very cool.
Um, it's a one energy cost, so I, I see that being worth it, especially for dealing with guards. Uh, bazookas, I mean, that that's cool, because like a bazooka would be good against... Uh, like I can see that being a lot of fun. Explosive rounds, I mean, you're shooting a bazooka, so what else are you going to do? <laughs> For each miss result you roll during this attack, deal one damage to an enemy card adjacent to your target. Okay, um, so that can be a lot of fun. There's two of those, there's zeros, and hey, even if you roll blind, you're still spreading some damage out. So this would be great on like a finishing. If a guy had like one heart, like one hit left, or you didn't care, that this would be a good way to get, you know, do some, do some splash damage. Uh, it says timed payload. So... The thing that bothers me about this artwork, and he's holding the grenade still, and you can see it burning. So grenades, you pull the pin out, nothing happens. It's when you release the handle that they start to cook. So as long as you're holding them, that's fine. You can actually put the pin back in them. Uh, but whatever. Attach this card to a target. When that card resolves, deal one damage to it. To the target. Okay, so this is actually pretty cool. This this is great for um, like that Serpentor card that says you can't defeat it until after it activates because if I'm not mistaken, it's not a Okay, so this, this um, Apex Strike, you have two dice and then you can attach the card to it. So if you get two hits or three hits again, this card can't be defeated, so you'd still put the two hits on it. Then you could put that on there. And when this card uh, activates, um, it'll be defeated, so you don't have to worry about defeating it. So, so again, a cool card. I like it. Times payload. Uh, again, zero cost, two dice. That could be very handy. All out of bubblegum. Yeah, I'm all out of bubblegum. That's a movie quote. Play this card when there's no energy and the shared energy pool. Reduce the cost of the next vehicle by two. Hey, that, that would be handy. Um, especially if you're... I wonder if you could pair that with some other people to really get a good vehicle for next to nothing. Okay, riding shotgun. Um, hey, so the, both of them have riding shotguns. That must be their... Um, sometimes they have like a shared card, like uh, the Power Blasters from the Power Ranger game or the Yojo from the G.I. Joe. This is the big bazooka. This is his big attack. Uh, during the next, uh, so you'd play this and then you have to wait a turn, but during the next hero uh, turn in battle, instead of playing a card, perform three attacks with three dice each. That's pretty good. Yeah, you'd have to take a moment to aim, so you'd, you'd have to take a hit, again, which, which sometimes you have to let a card resolve before you can defeat it, so I could see that being handy. Could you, like, attack a guard and then remove the guard and then target a different guard? I think you can, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, this would be good for clearing out a guard and then attacking something that was guarded. If 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 I'm getting that roll right, it's it's been a minute, but, uh, yeah. So I've, I'm looking forward to playing with both these Joes. Um, I think they both look fun, and, um, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see, we've read Apex Strike, uh, Perfect Assault. Um, so the, when it says this card, this, this can't be, uh, this damage cannot be, um, the, the Perfect Assault, when it says this damage cannot be prevented or reduced, uh, it, the only way you can do that is by defeating the card before it activates, because when the card activates, you ignore the text completely. So, yeah. Um... Boundless Ambitions. I think we read all of his cards but one, but, um... So the boss always has, like, one card that's particularly nasty, but I think this... Okay, yeah, we've read that one. I think that's his nastiest, the, uh, Drive for Conquest, where he gives one health and, uh, to each of his cards, um, and the damage is increased by one. And the Survival of the Fittest, um, remove half the foot soldiers, yeah, so we've read all of his cards. Um, so Serpentor... I think he's going to be a hard boss. Um, the bosses that I have faced personally, I have fought Rita, Zed, and Cobra. And I think that Rita's the hardest out of those. Zed was not as hard as Rita, but still pretty much a challenge, like a pretty good challenge. And Cobra really wasn't that big of a challenge. So, Which, which is fine, by the way, because Cobra really isn't <clears throat> that menacing. 
Um, and Serpentor is stronger than Cobra, which I appreciate because that's how he is in the show too. This is two max cards, and he's um, he's supposed to be paired, so his cards seem kind of weak, but they're supposed to go with uh, Zaymut's cards. Each hero must discard one card from the top of their deck. That's called High Strike. Those are nasty cards because you have no choice of uh, over, you know, do, doing. Yeah, there's no, they just get discarded, and yeah, that that can mess you up. Uh, this is double team. While this card is in play, deal two damage each time a Zamont card resolves. So uh, that's a passive card, but that's a nasty card too because. Um, yeah, anytime one of his brother's cards resolves, it just boop, does two damage on top of that. So that's a card you'd want to take out. Twin strikes. Deal, da deal two damage to two different heroes twice. That damage cannot be reduced. Okay, so um, you would pick two Joes in the fight, and they'd have to take two damage twice, which means, um, yeah, exactly as you said. So you do two damage, you draw your cards until you met the, you know, Till you blocked it, and then you take another two damage. Not bad, because two damage twice isn't the worst thing in the world, but, I mean, that is a possibility of removing four cards from your deck if you're unlucky. So, uh, you want to watch out for that. And then there's Eye for an Eye. When this card is defeated, drain one energy for each uh, Zaymot card that has not been defeated. And that's a guard and a passive. So, it's only one health. Yeah, you're going to want to be careful. Uh... And anytime you can't, uh, if you sometimes just drain energy and you don't have that, you have to discard a card instead. So you got to watch out for that kind of stuff. So you could lose a possibility of four energy. That's not, that's nasty. Okay, so we have a uh, twin shot. Um, it says drain two energy and then deal two damage to each hero. So uh, nasty card. Okay, so we have eye for an eye. And now we have two four two. When this card when this card is defeated, deal free damage to a number of heroes equal to the number of two max cards that have not been defeated. So you have high strike, and now you have low blow. Um, each hero must discard one card from the bottom of their deck. Yep, I, I like that. That's cool. High strike, low blow. Appreciate it. So these guys don't have fast either. Um, which is fine because more than likely the foot soldiers will have fast. So um, if any person says fast, like has the keyword fast, it means the enemies go first. Otherwise, the rangers would go first. So there's chances that you'll go first with these, which is nice, but uh, I would never count on that. Uh, but then we have double team, uh, which is a guard and a passive. And it says, uh, so it's cool as if you look, these kind of uh, synergize where they're, there's like two guard cards and two guard cards so um, on each twin. So that's pretty cool. Um, again, I think Bazooka would do well against these guys. Uh, but let's see. So double team Zamat. While this card is in play, deal two damage each time a Tomax card resolves. So yeah, these are. I think these are the nastiest cards out of these. Um, and these are the ones that you'd want to take out pretty quickly. Um, you'd want to save these for a last if possible because they do things to you. But sometimes it's good just to knock out some new plus with this being guarded. So I, I think these guys are going to be fun to fight. I'm looking forward to it. And the last thing that I wanted to do is look at the vehicles. There are two vehicle cards in this uh, in the set. Uh, they each cost two. So every time you, um, every time you defeat... Uh, enemy, you take them and you put them on your score, like there's a score tracker that you keep uh, track of. I use tokens instead, like hit tokens, just because you have a, f a pool of enemies, and sometimes you run out, so it's just easier to use hit tokens, because you have plenty of hit tokens. Uh, but anyways, every time you defeat an enemy, you, you put the token on your board, on your uh, like on this board, and then you can pay from that to use a vehicle. Um, which you'll do multiple times when you're playing. So you usually flip at the start of a battle, you flip over three uh, vehicle cards. Um, so this is the um, LCV Recon Sled, which is Low Crawl, low crawl Vehicle. Uh, that's a toy if I ever saw one. 
It says, use this card when a hero performs an attack. That hero may either add one dice to the attack or re-roll any number of dice. I usually go for re-rolls, but that's just me. Um, maybe if you're already re-rolling, that's not a bad way to get an extra die. This is Quick Strike, um, All-Terrain Missile Launcher. ATML? I don't know. <laughs> Use this card at the start of battle to roll three dice and gain that many energy, that much energy. So this card's cool because uh, you use it at the start of battle, and that could get you a lot of energy because sometimes you want to come out the gates using your best cards, especially against a boss. So very cool. Now let's see what these uh, the vehicle pack is. Uh, they've they're nice enough to put these little slits in here to help you get the rip started. Looks like a race car, by the way. Crossfire, fast attack vehicle. Use this card to allow a hero to play a card as though they were in this location. That's pretty cool. So if your G.I. Joe was at a different location and you had a card that would really help out, somebody could you could pay for this to let him play that card. There's the uh, Sky Storm. Um, Sky Storm. The Sky Storm. It says X-Wing Chopper. You guys will be hearing from Lucas Arts. <laughs> Use this card after any hero plays an attack card with an energy cost of one. That hero may immediately play that card an additional time without paying the energy cost. And that could be real handy in situations. If you didn't get the Cobra Ascent expansion in the pre-order, you have to buy these separately. They're like between five and fifteen bucks. I can't remember the price exactly, but. Uh, they're fun. I think these are cheaper. I think these are five bucks. Mobile Battle Bunker. <laughs> Armed Personnel Carrier. Move one hero from the command center to the location of this battle. Where this would be interesting is sometimes you can go back to the command center to heal your heroes up, get them at 100%, and this will let you bring them into a battle without paying an action. That is really nice. Uh, this is the Defiant. Uh, Star Trek will be calling you guys next. Um, rolling Launch Complex. Use this vehicle at the end of a battle. After this battle, up to two different heroes may move to a location of their choice. That's great, and I can see why that's expensive. It costs six. So, these cards are great. Looking forward to playing with them. Well... I think that covers what's in the box, and so, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this expansion. Um, well, that covers the Cobra Ascent expansion, and the uh, vehicle pack number four. Just want to say thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take the initiative, roll out. See ya.